Peter uh, chapter 3. We're not going to cover a whole chapter this morning. I do want to read it with you. Um, I want to really deal with the first part of it um, today, and then we'll circle back and hit the highlights of the second part and do chapter 4 uh, tomorrow. But let's read the entire chapter this morning. Um, and thank you, as always, for, for joining me. He says, in the same way, you wives be submissive to your own husbands, so that even if any of them are disobedient to the word, they may be won without a word by the behavior of their wives. As they observe your chaste and respectful behavior, your adornment must not be merely external, braiding the hair and wearing gold, jewelry, or putting on dresses, but let it be the hidden person of the heart, the imperishable quality of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is precious in the sight of God. For in this way, in former times, the holy women also, who hoped in God, used to adorn themselves, being submissive to their own husbands. Just as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, and you have become her children if you do what is right without being frightened by any fear. You husbands, in the same way, live with your wives in an understanding way, as with someone weaker, since she is a woman. Show her honor as a fellow heir of the grace of life, so that your prayers will not be hindered. To sum up, all of you be harmonious, sympathetic, brotherly, kind-hearted, humble in spirit. Not returning evil for evil or insult for insult, but giving a blessing instead, for you were called for the very purpose that you might inherit a blessing. For the one who desires life to love and see God, say, see good days, must keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking to see. He must turn away from evil and do good. He must seek peace and pursue it, for the eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous, and his ears attend to the prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Who's there to harm you if you prove zealous for what is good? But even if you should suffer for the sake of righteousness, you are blessed. Do not fear their intimidation and do not be troubled. But sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts, always being ready to make a defense to everyone who asks you to give an account for the hope that is in you, yet with gentleness and reverence. And keep a good conscience so the thing in which you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ will be put to shame. For it is better, if God should will it so, that you suffer for doing what is right, rather than for doing what is wrong. For Christ also died for sins once for all of us, uh, the just for the unjust, so that he might bring us to God, having been put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, which in which also he went and, and made a proclamation to the spirits now in prison. Once who were disobedient, when the patience of God kept waiting in the days of Noah during the construction of the ark, which a few, that is, eight persons, were brought safely through the water. Corresponding to that, baptism now saves you, not the removal of dirt from the flesh, but an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ who's at the right hand of God, having gone into heaven after angels and authorities, powers, and been subjected to him. As I said a moment ago, I, I want to go back and talk a little bit about baptism. Um, and tomorrow, I'll talk a little bit about, uh, about this idea here in verse 15 of sanctifying Christ as Lord in our hearts, being ready um, to make a defense to everyone who asked to, to give an account. We'll, we'll talk about really those two um, verses as we begin in, in, in um, on Friday, on Thursday, Thursday morning. Um, you know, brethren, here in, in chapter three, obviously there, there's some wonderful reminders why, um, by way of our homes, the relationship between husband and wife, a, a beautiful picture of a quiet and submissive wife, winning her uh, disobedient husband, not with words, but with her example. Um, she's a woman with a godly heart, characterized by a quiet and and gentle spirit, which is pleasing to God. And, and husband, certainly, we, um, we live with our wives. We're to live with our lives with a, in an understanding way. We, we treat her as one of great value, going to great lengths to care for her, understanding that, that she's a fellow heir of grace. And in doing so, husbands, our prayers to God not hindered. And certainly, we recognize that as, uh, as a huge deal. But then he says in, in verse 8, dealing with our relationships one to another, I, I want to focus here. He tells us to be harmonious, um, be united. Certainly love for others, love for truth, love for Christ. Um, with those things in common, brethren, we'll have unity, we'll be harmonious. He tells us to be sympathetic. Um, we need to feel for one another, um, care for one another. We need to care when, when our brethren are hurting, when our brethren are struggling. And certainly be compassionate in the sense that we do what we can to alleviate that suffering. And certainly we're to be brotherly, um, the idea of loving one another. We talked about that yesterday, loving with fervency, acting in one another's uh, best interest. He talks there that we're to be kind-hearted. Um, that's the opposite of being hard and calloused um, toward one another. And that largely characterizes relationships in the world, unfortunately. And he says to be humble in spirit idea of seeing ourselves for who we are. We're, 
We're sinners in, in desperate need of grace, no better than anyone else. We're putting others first, we're ranking others ahead of self. Um, just as we can read there in Philippians chapter 2, Jesus, that perfect example of being humble in spirit. You know, brethren, the church ought to be a place where, where we come for love, where we come for comfort and, and encouragement by way of our relationships one with another. Certainly, there will be times when we don't disagree. Certainly, we'll have different judgments. Uh, there'll be some dust-ups, possibly. But if we'll let these five traits govern us, we'll have unity. And the church, in, in many ways, will, will be what God intended it uh, to be. And then he says in verse 9, and this will be our takeaway. I want to leave it here with you this morning. He tells us not returning evil for evil or insult for insult. Uh, let, let's stop there. Brethren, that's the world's way. Get even and more, right? He says, but giving a blessing instead, that's different. For you were called for the very purpose that you might inherit a blessing. You know, brethren, we do what is right regardless regardless of what everybody else is doing, regardless of how others are treating us. Listen, we can always control ourselves. We can't control other people, but we can control ourselves. We can control our response. And we can always choose to act like Jesus. We can always choose to be godly. I think sometimes we're too reactive. Not returning evil for evil or insult for insult, but giving a blessing instead. For you were called for the very purpose that you might inherit a blessing. As we close this morning, let's just go back to, to verse 18, where he reminds us of what's been done for us in Christ Jesus. He says, for Christ also died for sins once for all, the just for the unjust. Here's the reason. So that he might bring us to God having been put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. Brethren, we access the blood of Christ where we find forgiveness of our sins. He says in verse 21, baptism now saves us. It's an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus. I, I would encourage you, if you're listening to this this morning and you're not a child of God, I would encourage you to get your Bible out. Survey the book of Acts. Um, see what they did is they were led by the Holy Spirit as, as the apostles were revealing the mind of God to them. Read Acts chapter 2. Read Acts chapter 8. Read through the book of Acts. Read Acts chapter 10. What did they do? What were they told to do? You know, Jesus, he died for sins once for all. He being the just, we being the unjust, to bring us to God. You see, sin separates us from God. Jesus came to bring us to God, to have a relationship with him. You know, those who die in a state separated from God will remain there for all eternity. I would just encourage you, if you're not right with God this very morning, um, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Thank you so much for, for joining me this morning. Would you pray with me, please? Our Father in heaven, Father, for another day in your word, Father, we are so very thankful. Father, for your grace, for your mercy, for your love, and sending your son to, to come to this earth, and he being just, to die for the unjust, Father, we are just so very thankful. Father, we recognize that we don't deserve it, but Father, we are so thankful. Father, we pray for those who are not right with you, for those who have never obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ, never repented of their sins, been baptized for the forgiveness of their sins. Father, we recognize that. In the book of Acts and Acts chapter 2, as those people ask, what must we do to be saved? They, were, they repented of their sins and were baptized for the forgiveness of their sins. And they were added to your eternal kingdom, Father. Father, we pray for those who have never done that. And Father, we pray for those this morning who are not right with you. Their sin in our lives, Father, gives us the courage to repent of these things. Confessing these sins, Father, recognizing that you've promised to forgive us. And Father, we recognize what a blessing that is. Father, be with all of those who are hurting. We especially ask you to be with Captola right now. We ask you to continue to be with our brother Mike Morgan. Father, we ask you to, to be with the Liebman family, those in their family that are 
that are struggling right now, we ask you to be with our sister Susan Green, Father, as she's recovering. We ask you to be with her brother-in-law. And, uh, and Father, we certainly continue to pray for the Green family and the loss of Susan and Tim's son, Tanner's brother, Father. Father, bless us this day. Be with Jenny, Father. We're so thankful that Jenny uh, yesterday took her last radiation treatment. Father, for the progress that she's made, Father, we just ask you to continue to be with her. Father, bless us this day with opportunities to do good. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.